so much for having me. Uh, glad to be here and very glad to share this, uh, these resources with you, these totally free resources with, uh, with all of you. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think one of my missions in life is just to get students inspired uh, with STEM and coding. And uh, this particular uh, group of projects does a really good job of that. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully you can you can take it and hand it to your students, and uh, uh, and they can have as much fun as I do with these things. So, um, um, but yes, there's going to be. Uh, I'm going to go through a few of these projects, and then I'll give you a handful of re resources uh, where you can dig in a little bit deeper. And and uh, there's there's more than just projects here, um, but. Um, Let's go ahead and get started. So yes, I'm a senior project or a senior uh, partnerships lead here at Tinker and um, uh, doing something like being able to bring in NASA and stuff like that, you know, is really just, I was a, I'm a former science teacher, former STEM tech director uh, um, here in Illinois. So kind of combines all the, the good things uh, I love about technology in one place. Uh, so um, this is kind of the, you know, agenda for the day. We're going to go through uh, how to build a mission patch. We're going to see how uh, we can build pointillism art uh, with the new James Webb telescope photos. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to facilitate and show you how you can uh, help students program a lunar rover. I have a couple uh, of lunar projects. And then there's a bunch of others. We're just going to do a little uh, overview of those. And then we actually will show you where you can uh, get and bring NASA into your own classroom. Uh, so you're going to see how you can actually have NASA um, uh, teach your students. So there's a, there, there is a way. We've, we've found a way. Um, but I'm going to give you lots of links here. Uh, I want to make sure that you have everything you know, that, that you need to get started. Uh, first place and first thing you should do. Uh, is you should go to tinker.com slash NASA. That'll cut through and get you right there. Uh, and then there's actually a join link there or a QR code. You can use either one of those things um, to just, uh, if you haven't joined Tinker, you should definitely do that. Create a class, uh, add your students, that type of thing. We connect with ClassLink, Clever, and, and Google Classroom. So lots of ways to get your students into your classes. Uh, and then we've even made it super even simpler for them to engage with the NASA projects. So, um, uh, and I'll make sure you know how to get to everything. So, um, so starting by just going to the NASA page, tinker.com slash NASA, uh, you see this beautifully designed uh, page. Uh, make sure you're signed in. Um, and that way, uh, you know, if you're going to your dashboard, Tinker dashboard, whatnot, you'll uh, be able to, um, make sure you can see student projects and stuff like that. But we have 11 projects here, plus a place where you can do um, just an open project. So um, these span the, the gamut from K-12. So you can start with, um, uh, you can start with K, you know, first grade, second grade, and you can go all the way to high school. We've got block coding, there's Python, there's JavaScript, there's everything. We have teacher guides for everything. There's Illinois standards embedded into all of these particular projects, uh, which is great because those CS standards are new. So we wanna make sure you have access to, uh, to those. And then um, this is where you will go ahead and you will get started. We want you to click on that. Uh, mission patch projects, so we can uh, we can walk you through um, examples of what can what are, what are these mission patches going to look like? Well, if you've seen a you know a, one of these the uh, you know NASA launches, you know that those astronauts have a patch on their um, you know on their suit, or there might be a, a design or a logo on the uh, the actual spaceship, the actual rocket, uh, and that's what these are kind of uh, um, based off of. And not too long ago, we had a contest to have students do different types of uh, of mission patches, and this is this is what uh, the result was. Lots of animation. One of the great things about coding is it gives you the opportunity to, to do some great 
you know, starter animation and stuff like that. So that's probably one of the first ways I would would get students to uh, get excited about coding because it's really Tinker leans on heavily on art and design, um, and I think coding goes goes really nice with uh, with art and design. So um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh the web here so i can walk you through the mission patch but i did create a link here so you can actually go to go tinker slash nasa mission patch 22 that's pretty big i get it um or you can just go to the nasa page uh as well and you can start your project there um, but let's uh let me go ahead and, and open that for you uh, i'm going to stop sharing for just one second and switch to uh, i'm going to switch to my desktop and hopefully you don't get a lot of desktop noise. All right, just let me know if you see what I see. There we go. So here we are at the Tinker uh, web uh, website. This is tinker.com slash NASA. Um, all of our projects are here. I'm going to go ahead and, and click down on the mission patch project. All right. And close a couple windows here. Let me stretch that open for you. And so what I have here, this is the Tinker Workshop, and we've created a very basic project. It could be for beginners, but hey, if you're an advanced coder, you could really dig in to this project and, and, and you know, go, you know, have a, a whole lot of fun. So this sample project is kind of like the, you know, what you could really do with something like this, kind of create an animated mission patch. Um, and all of our, um, the Tinker Workshop, Basically, a lot of these projects, they'll have a tutorial on the side. The, the, the library of blocks will be under here. Uh, but as you go through the tutorial, we'll give you an example. You can walk through. Students will be able to walk through and, and go to the next part of the, uh, the project. Um, here, we're just giving students a little bit of uh, you know, uh, exposition as to what they're going to do here. Now, they've been given. Um, Yes, thank you very much for that. They've been given a, a sample patch to basically animate here. And so I'm gonna do just some basic things to get us started. Um, on the top right, this big screen here on the top right, that's what we call, um, uh, well, the bottom here is what we call the actors. The top right is what we call the stage. So we have some metaphors. I'm gonna go down to the patch actor here and hit the uh, settings there and what i'm given here are a couple different costumes there's one that's a triangle one that's a circle i like the triangle because it kind of looks more like what i think i'd see on a on a patch for uh, an astronaut um, and i'm going to go ahead and hit next now what my job is to do is really just get creative color this animate it and uh, i'm going to show you just some basic things that you can do with your students to animate uh, this mission patch uh, and kind of get things going so uh so let's go ahead and go back here i'm going to go ahead and edit the triangle and i'm given the drawing editor so as a designer here in the tinker workshop i can design i can i can create my own we call it, you know my own actors i can upload something so if you wanted students to do this in a different you know creative um, place like google drawings i know you could do that um, but here i'm going to go ahead and use uh, the tinker uh, drawing editor and i'm going to fill this um, i think blue is a good color red white and blue that kind of thing is a good uh, i think for uh, for nasa and let's start with uh, just kind of let's go with like a school mascot um, who can think of a good school mascot uh, that i can add here we'll kind of lean on the on the school mascot for this uh, for this mission patch um, i need a good we have some basic fonts in here too so maybe i can do that panthers great let's do that all right and i want to, i'm just going to do this uh the panthers all right so we're having a little fun here we're just doing some basic uh, kind of design here on this patch i got some white text i'm going to save that hang on um on my blue logo and now what i want to do is maybe add some animated space type of things uh, and to do that i can go here to my ad actor and i'm given a lot of options i've got um, a media library with just hundreds and hundreds and, uh, of different options here and so i can go and look for uh, moon i can just do a search for moon and i'm 
I'm given all these different character actors, props. There, that looks like a really good astronaut. I like that guy a lot. Um, so I'm going to use that one because that looks pretty cool. And then I'll add another actor um, back to my media library here. And I will go um, and maybe add a little, a little moon like that. So I'm having a little fun just finding some cool pieces here to add. Um, I, got a, I got a little guy here. I've got my moon. Um, and so let's say I want to add some basic uh, animation to my astronaut. Let's start with that. Um, I actually have something called the backpack in Tinker. So if I go up here to my backpack, I can save code that I've used in other projects and then reuse it. So coders do this all the time. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna drag and drop some animated code, animation code that I've used in a previous project, and just modify it a little bit. All right. Um, I'm going to, I don't want to just move this guy, but you know, what do astronauts do in space? They might want to, they might like rotate. So I'm going to go find um, a rotate block and see if I can uh, make this look a little bit uh, more spacey. And so what I've got basically here, and I like to tell students this, I was a film major at one point that we're basically creating keyframes when we create animation in, in, in code. And so by telling it to turn and wait, we're almost creating like that of the effect of a stop motion animation um, movie. So what I'm actually doing here is um, I don't need that next costume. I just need to turn and wait forever so that it rotates. And so what I would always tell my students is, you know, run your code as many times as you want. To. You're going to iterate and test your code. Uh, and so now I've got this little guy and he's rotating and he's floating. And, and that's, uh, that's a good start. That's a good start, I think, uh, to kind of getting this moving. Um, I could have a little more fun with this moon as well. I want to show you a quick tip and tinker. What if I wanted to copy a whole bunch of code onto another actor? I could simply drag and drop and uh, put that onto my moon. Now, what if I changed the moon um, uh, 0.05. We'll make that go. That's going to go faster, isn't it? Um, I'm going to do my moon a little bit differently. So now I'm kind of playing around with that a little bit, having some fun. It has nothing to do with the Panthers, but uh, I mean, hey, it's got the, the text anyway. Uh, so this is a really good start. And you can see I, I, there's just a lot farther you, uh, that you can go with it. Um, Tinker has a library of blocks. So if, you ever, if you've ever used any other programs, you can really dig into the Tinker workshop here. And if you go to more, you're going to find blocks that are, there's animation, motion, uh, synth, music. There's some game kit blocks. There's now artificial intelligent block, intelligence blocks. So if I wanted to add and use my body as an actor, um, that is really awesome. And, uh, I probably will break it if I try to add it, but let's, uh, I can try to see if I, uh, if I added my uh, artificial intelligence block here and added the pose, um, you can basically, uh, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like anyway, um, just because it's fun and we just added it. Start hands detection. So I'll show you that and uh, let me see if I can, uh, probably have to put in video, but uh, let's give it a shot. Okay. So you see that? And you, if you see my face, you can see that I can actually now interact with my actors in that space. This is really cool. Um, so we just added these new artificial intelligence uh, features. And so it's really, really neat. Um, so I had to, I had to show off and show you that. That's pretty cool. Um, there's another one where I can do my face as well. So uh, if I, uh, I can start face detection um, and uh, that's pretty cool too. So I think I have to show you my video though, but I don't want to go off in too much of a tangent. All I know is it's cool and you should try it. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm going to pause there for a moment so I can go back. But you got you to gotta try that. You got to definitely go to the AI blocks and there's some, uh, some really cool stuff. So that is uh, the mission patch. Uh, and there's a lot of, you know, definitely a lot of ways that students can go, but you can see there's a, the, um, uh, a lot of road to go and be creative there.
Um, but let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, and move on just a little bit here. And uh, if you want to find out how do students access these, these uh, they can, you know, obviously you can just tell students to go to tinker.com slash NASA. But if you want to see their projects, collect their projects, then you're going to want to make sure that they sign in. And if you've added a class and that they can go and um, uh, all they need to do, and I'm showing you right here, is go into their class. And then there's a folder there with all of the Hour of Code projects. Uh, so if they go to the right there you'll be able to see um, there's a NASA tab inside their folder. So all of these NASA projects live directly inside their folder the whole time. So it is, um, it is pretty cool. Um, I'll probably show you that more than once, but, uh, uh, but that is Mission Patch. And uh, there's more to, to learn and show you about Mission Patch uh, in a moment, but uh, um, I wanna move on to uh, talk to you a little bit about pointillism, because that's gonna be our next thing. And I just wanted to point this out. You know, we have a course actually in high school that um, is all about art and programming. And uh, I just wanted to point you to it. If you wanna look at it, preview it, you, you should definitely take it out, but uh, check it out. But there is actually an option uh, where you can you know, teach students probably, you know, nine and, a, and up and this one's a little bit more advanced, but uh, we're teaching students through Python um, how to um, create and build art and, and digital art. So you really should check it out. There's a whole lesson on pointillism uh, and uh, it's it, there's a lab there because what I'm going to do basically here is show you a very quick project that you can do with them inside NASA um, that uh, uses these pointillism tools. Uh, so I want to make sure that you have uh, that, but that link is there. That QR code is there. Go tinker slash HS. Um, and uh, that stuff's not free, but you should check it out anyway, because it's cool. Um, but the next project is, uh, is the Earth as Art project. So I'm going to break that down for you uh, as well. And this project, basically, uh, I really liked the idea of taking the James Webb photos and then basically using this project and creating this pointillism art. And so what you can see here is you can see that we've taken one of the James Webb photos and then it's slowly kind of generating this pointillism uh, um, image. And so we can do this with just about anything. It's, it's uh, um, you could, you know, students can do at any kind of image they want. But I thought because we're doing some really cool stuff and, and uh, the James Webb photos just came out, it's a nice uh, marriage of these two things. So uh, you can actually get to the project if you go to gotinker slash earthart22. Um, you can find the project there. I'll keep that up there for a little while. Um, but let us let me walk you through this project uh, as well. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead. It's a, it's, a, it's a Python project. So, hey, you know, what I like about these projects is they are really for anyone who wants to engage with coding. So if, they, if your students don't know Python, it's okay. They can still kind of hack away at this and uh, we kind of let them uh, do that. So, so I'm gonna start here on the, on the NASA page again. And uh, I'm going to uh, scroll down to the uh, Earth as Art project. There we are. All right, so now we're using the uh, the code, uh, the text editor. So Tinker has a block editor, we have a text editor and everything is blank in here. There's some sample imagery, uh, but it's all blank because I haven't added the code. We have a tutorial in the, in the right side, a preview that's also blank because we don't have any code in it yet. So let's get some code in there. And kind of much like our NASA block projects, we're holding students' hands here a little bit, right? Um, and we're going to basically allow them to import their code and then kind of hack away at it. Uh, and this is just a great way to learn. It's a great way to learn, uh, you know, kind of manipulating little bits of the code so you can, students will know kind of what uh, some of this stuff is. But we're not doing a lot of heavy handed teaching of computer science here, but that's OK. We get to play with it anyway. Um, so this tutorial, what we're going to first do is we need to like import the um, processing library. Uh, so we're going to do that. Um, it kind of shows us the size of the points that are going to be made with the project. Uh, and then uh, we're going to also import the, the functions uh, for setting up the actual frame of, of you know, what the project will look like. Uh, so we're going to do that. 
And so we kind of give you the examples very much like our block projects. And then here's what your code should look like. Now we want to move into the, uh, the drawing points down below. So we're going to uh, give you an opportunity or students opportunity to kind of manipulate that a little bit as well. Define, you know, drawing and things like that. Um, and so uh, we're going to go ahead and import that as well. So there's four different sections there. And uh, basically it's random. So we're basically showing, we're teaching this program to pick a random spot and then to start building uh, this piece of art kind of randomly until, uh, until it's there. So we're importing all that. There's one click to import. And then um, uh, we're gonna show you how to you know, add your own image. Right now we're gonna use the sample images, but then at the end, I can also cr click the actual image to save up like a PNG. So once your art is created, you can then, students can then download it. And this is one that you could actually like print out then. Um, so I think that's, uh, that was one thing I asked, I was like, how are they going to show off their work? You know, like let's have them uh, do a screenshot. So here's a sample, basically, with all that code. Um, right now, it, it slowly generates. Right, it's using this kind of random points, um, and it's using the sample images that are in there. So I'm going to make sure you have the link, but uh, it's not in. Uh, it's not. I haven't shown it to you yet. But basically, we're going to go to the James Webb um, uh, site that's the Flickr page where they have all the images. Um, and we're gonna pull down one of those images so that we can uh, we can get that. So this is the James Webb Flickr page. I actually got this right off of the Twitter. Uh, I think uh, I went to Twitter and I found that page. They, uh, they're posting them all here. And there's a good image here that we can use for this. And I'm gonna click on that. And what's also nice is that um, it downloads in a perfect size. So that's small 400 by almost 400 square. It's very, very, very similar. I can drag and drop that directly into my code editor. Um, I'm gonna wanna rename it because it's a huge, huge thing. I'm gonna make it real simple. And then I'll show you kind of how we're importing, um, importing that. We're hacking away, right? We're just gonna um, take uh, the title of those images and then we're going to rerun this and see what it looks like um, with our James Webb photo. So, you know, teachers, you're going to have, obviously, you're going to start coming up with really great examples and ideas for how to take this and run with it. Uh, but now we've got our James Webb photo. We're creating our pointillism art. We can then manipulate things a little bit um, as well. Uh, I think you can, you know, can change the pointillism size here. Uh, you know, go to 10, go to 20, make it a little bigger, play around uh, with the uh, variables there, uh, which is great. That's what it's all about, right? Uh, we're, we're making, we're creating, we're iterating, we're trying things out. Don't worry about breaking stuff because you can always, you know, unbreak it. So I like that. It's almost uh, out of focus. Uh, maybe if you squint after a while, you'll be able to see that, uh, that, that final image. Um, but yeah, this is basically the Earth is Art pointillism uh, project. So you've got uh, kind of a very simple uh, block of Python here that we can kind of play around uh, with and, uh, and have some fun. So, um, so here's where I've created a link here, uh, and it's go tinker slash earthlink. There's two links here, one's with, with uh, all the web images. There's another link there for additional Earth images that NASA provided us. So if you go there, um, uh, you can uh, you can see uh, a lot more of those uh, those images and use what you have. So so go tinker slash earth 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 link, um, and uh, all you know those web images are collecting more and more every day. So earth ink, it's okay, it's okay. We'll get that in there. Uh, and again, like uh, like the last one, uh, students can find this project simply just by logging in. Uh, going to your class, your Tinker class, and then um, uh, going to their Hour of Code folder, which is directly in their, their classroom. Thank you. That's cool. And there we go. Hour of Code. There you go. And that one is at the bottom. NASA. All of them are right there. And remember, when students do them while they're logged in, they can save their projects, go back. You know, it's important. I think there was a time when like hour of code type of projects were, you know, all over the place. And we've uh, we've kind of made it really easy uh, for you to for students to save 
and for you to be able to view their work. So let's take a look at the Lunar Rover project. So I kind of went both ends of the spectrum. I showed you kind of something that's very, you know, very beginner, then something that could be a total, you know, uh, you know, uh, advanced project or not, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but the Lunar Test Drive project is kind of like the third one of our uh, cool projects in this area. There's an advanced one. There's there's a few lunar projects that kind of use the same thing. Um, but you've got that link at gotinker slash lunar drive, and you've got the QR code there as well. Here's an example of what that uh, that looks like. Basically, we're we're proud. This is a great setup lesson to if you if you have a robotics program to practicing your robotics, doing it virtually, and then uh, uh, and then with actual robotics later. So so this is a good example. Uh, but let me go ahead again and show you the live version of that. Um, I'm going to close that. I've done Earth as Art. Let's close that. I'm going to open up Lunar Test Drive here. And again, this uses the, the, Tinker, um, the Tinker Workshop. We're back to block. And I'm always given a an example or a test, you know, a model, I should say, of what a project may look like. So that's great. Uh, we always make sure to do that. And uh, I'm going to walk through in my uh, in my uh, tutorial here to basically, you know, add some elements. So there's some cool things I get to do here. I get to like change the terrain. I can like change the terrain color by editing the stage. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, some basics there, um, and then I can start actually dragging and dropping some blocks here. And there's some sample uh, text code here that kind of tells you what to do. And for now, I might just keep that. It's basically just saying, um, you know, drive the rover to the satellite to to win. <laughs> um, I don't know what we're winning, but uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and start there. And then the idea is when we we want to uh, create the situation so that when the um, when the rover touches the satellite uh, that it uh, it wins right so we're going to program the goal to react when the when the rover reaches um, the uh, the satellite so checking for questions if anyone has them by the way, I did have poll questions, but I just took them all down. <laughs> so I'm not putting them back up, um, but that's okay. Uh, so now we want to program obstacles, right? So you can uh, program your obstacles to make sure uh, that they're static, that they can't basically, you know, move around. So uh, I'm, I'm programming my small rock to make sure that it, uh, uh, it's setting it active and that it's static and it's not moving, right? Uh, so that's important. By the way, these are our physics blocks. So if you go to the physics library, um, there are just a, a ton of physics options there if you're really into uh, really into that. And I'm switching back and forth from the tutorial to the physics blocks. So, um, so the next real part, hard part here, I wouldn't say hard part is, I need to program the actual rover to get to this satellite. Um, and so I'm setting speed. I want to point the rover in a direction and move the rover. So this is a sample code. Um, but what I'm going to need to do is find some point, a point block and a move block. Um, so I've already got uh, point the rover in a direction, right? Um, so point rover in direction. 90, 180, that type of thing, zero. We're going to be uh, pointing them in uh, um, and using uh, degrees. And then um, we can also set the speed. Uh, so how fast do we want the rover to go, right? And so we actually have rover blocks, right? So um, what I want to do is point the rover and move the rover by you know, a certain Move rover. There we go. So move rover. There we go. All right. So 700 or 800. We don't even know what that's like yet, but we want to test it to see what that's what that looks like. So if I hit play now, it's going to hit. It's not going to work, right? Um, we need to point it in the right direction. Let's try 180 
and hit play. So it's definitely going to go that way, but I need to uh, kind of tell it when to turn, how long to do that, um, and um, to move and, and to move along. So I'm going to I'm going to um, go back to 90 just for my example here, because uh, I do have some other things I want to show you. Um, but let's say that uh, we want to just get over to the satellite and um, we programmed something wrong. And I'm going to show you what we did. When we're touching the rover, I think that needs to be the satellite. It's either the satellite or the rover. So let's try it. Um, and I will blame the tutorial on that. Yay. So it says success right there. Congratulations. Um, so we can have a little more fun, you know, making a, an obstacle course for our rover. Uh, we could give it a little bit more agency and actually tell it to like go pick something up and come back. Or, you know, it really depends on the story you want to tell with your with your rover. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, of direction um, uh, that you can go with uh, with the rover project. Um, but uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, and again, it could be a beginner, but it could totally go advanced depending on how far uh, you want to go with that. So, um, yeah. So again, link for that is over at gotinker slash lunar drive. Uh, and then again, if students want to uh, access that, it's still in their, um, their folders inside their class. So they just need to log in and, and get into their classes. Um, and I've shown the class how to, how to get in there for a while, so uh, a few times now. So, so what else is there, right? There are a few other options. Let's get to part four here, and there's more NASA projects. So again, tinker.com slash NASA, what more is there available to us? Um, let's take a look. I'm going to go to my NASA projects page here, and there's a bunch of uh, um, extra fun things here. There's the Martian weather station. There's the terrain generator. These are more, more advanced, but hey, what if I wanted to try something that was like um, data science? You know, that would be Mar Martian weather station. What if I wanted to do something that was the same project as the, the Martian pa mission patch, but it's in Spanish. Uh, so now we have one that's totally uh, in Spanish. That way we can have two students, one that might be an EL student, um, uh, doing the exact same project and uh, totally translated for, uh, for those students. The Martian Weather Project is probably one of my favorites because what we've done here basically is we, and I'm probably just going to, I might just have to preview it because uh, I'm not going to code this one live, is we are taking data uh, and um, uh, we are implement, we are importing this data, data so that um, comparing Martian data with uh, weather data from Yuma, Arizona. So uh, the sample project, you'll see these great illustrious graphs. It's really cool. There's actually a CSV file and, that we have to uh, compare to. So you see that there's um, earth temperature file here and there's Mars temperature file. And what we're basically doing is we are creating really beautiful graphs that compare those two. And that's really a lot of what data science is. We're coding for, uh, for data. Uh, and just like before, we would um, import our libraries, uh, go back to our main file here, uh, import our libraries one by one, and, uh, and uh, just kind of to help us get started, right? Um, and I'm just kind of burning through this, but this is just a great, uh, this one's a little heftier, but it is a great, great project to, to play around. You can see there's different types of data that we're using. There, we have different types of graphs, um, but I'm just, uh, I'm just enamored with that project. And when it, when you get it done, there's like three different graphs that, uh, that will event, eventually pop up. So that's the Martian weather station. There's terrain generator, which is similar in, in kind to, um, the uh, Earth um, as Art project, we're kind of taking images from NASA's Earth uh, um, terrain website, and then we're creating kind of these cool terrain generation uh, uh, images too. So it's, it's a little art, a little design, a little science all wrapped into one. Um, when we're talking about beginner projects, you've got the lunar test drive, search and scan is a little more challenging. Rover Relay, that's like an advanced block project. Um, so it starts to 
get a little bit more um, intricate. You're designing your whole terrain. You've got buildings. Uh, you know, there's um, there's a whole bunch more that you can do here. You're taking things. You're planting flags. You're moving around. It, it's definitely more uh, more intricate. But it uses that same environment as the as before. Um, all right, so I have a couple more resources that I want to make sure you have before we are done today. But this is, um, you got more NASA projects. Make sure to check those out, tinker.com slash NASA. Um, I'm checking for questions if there are there. Um, the last thing we want to do is show you that basically what we've done is we did um, live shows with NASA specialists. And we recorded them. And what you can do is use them basically as a partner uh, to these projects. So if you want to bring in NASA specialists and then have them work on the um, uh, projects with you, uh, then you've got that resource for you as well. And we've recorded uh, a dozen or so of these. Uh, and I put that link at NASA Live. Um, so that you can look at all of the different recordings. This is and one so this example. This is the logo that we see a lot this on T-shirts um, and a lot of. Click uh, past uh, Amy. Amy Crane. She's actually one of the designer that worked on uh, the Artemis logo, and she explains and helps us understand what really goes into a mission patch design. It's there's a it's super in depth. Um, but uh, so this is the logo is that we see a lot on T-shirts and a lot of like 45, uh, stickers that we see it's, and it's car long, decals. But, but really, it's really cool. Um, it's We've really got the really blue helpful. Earth. So make sure uh, to go to that link that we NASA call, Live. We kind of all of the links space. to We've got the word NASA. So words uh, are also important when we're looking at all of these um, uh, patches too. Because you want to see if it's something we're talking about a mission or, for instance, this is a space engineers are going to help you go through the rover project for NASA. And then we've got a little bit of movement here And then we have a Spanish one. We've got uh, the for orbit. the Spanish and my favorite is the red vector. So mm -hmm. it kind of so, reminds me of something launching off into space. And so there's a there's almost energy and movement that you can kind of do as you design something, even if it's 2D and flat. We can still get a lot of motion uh, with something like this. Sorry, I realize I'm talking over Amy. But it's uh, it's really cool. And those those are very still very relevant. As we know, Artemis is imminently launching in the next few weeks. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, lesson plans. I made sure to wrap and put all the lesson plans in one place. By the way, there's also a, um, I went ahead and put this pre presentation inside that folder. So if you go to go tinker slash NASA plans, I just put everything in there for you. Uh, what we've done is uh, there's a teacher guide for every one of these lessons. Uh, so I'll make sure that you have that as well. Just uh, you can scroll down. It's on the NASA page. They're also there. But if you want to add them to your Google Drive or whatnot, I put them in a Google Drive folder for you. But uh, there's teacher guards for Earth is Art, Design a Mission Patch, Spanish version as well. Um, and they're all aligned to the new Illinois uh, coding standards. So, um, yeah, nice. I mean, everything's broken down, you know, bit by bit. So it's, uh, it's really helpful. It will help you get prepared to teach these lessons in full with your, uh, with your students. So um, let me just pause there. I don't know if anyone has a question. Uh, if you do, I can wait a moment and answer them, point you in a direction. Um, happy to pause for a question. Um, but let me just finally uh, give you these final resources. So do make sure you sign up. Um, and again, you can go and do it at that same place right there, um, which is the NASA page, tinker.com slash NASA. Um, and uh, I want to make sure, oh, yeah, I like to reshow slides. It's fun. Um, I did have another link there, but hey, you know, that's the join link. However, yes, we, we know that. Right. Uh, finally, you know, if you want to demo all of Tinker, you can schedule a demo. We can show you more. There's a lot more there. I mean, we have thousands of hours of curriculum and projects and, and, and uh, a lot going on there. So, uh, so check that out uh, if you want to demo Tinker. And then if you just want a Tinker friend, <laughs> uh, you can just reach out to me uh, and I will be your Tinker pal. Uh, and we can talk about coding and STEM and anything, you know, anything that you need. Um, I will be your Tinker friend. So that is what uh, that is for drezac at tinker.com. And uh, there you go. 
yeah, we kind of post some fun stuff on that, uh, on that hashtag, but, uh, that's all for me, my friends and, uh, LTC. Thank you for joining, uh, you know, for, uh, asking me to come today and, and um, we hope to see your projects and, and all the amazing things that you're going to create with Tinker and NASA. Uh,